Hello friends, it's The Stitches. In my last video, I showed you all how to make a rough inspired choker because it was the winner of a poll I posted in my community tab. So for this video, I'm going to show you how to make the second project that I mentioned, which is a soft crown made from fabric. This accessory is super simple to put together. It doesn't require any wires and it can easily be made from scraps, which makes it great for beginners. So let's get started. First, we need to draft a pattern. You want to start by measuring around your head where the crown will sit. For me, that's 21 inches. Then we divide that number in half, since our pattern will be designed to be cut on a fold. For me, that's 10 and a half inches. So I'll draw a line that's 10 and a half inches long that will serve as the bottom of my pattern. I wanted the middle point of my crown to be three inches tall, so I'll draw another line that's three inches long at a right angle on one side of that line. This will be the fold line on our pattern. In a lighter color marker, I also made marks every two inches along my bottom line to use as reference points for drawing the curves between the peaks of my crown. You can make these reference points closer together, but I wouldn't make them any further apart than two inches. I wanted my smaller peaks to be two inches tall, so I made perpendicular lines using that same lighter color marker to mark where those would be. The lines for all my peaks were four inches apart, meaning I still have some of those reference marks in between these lines. Those extra marks are where the thinnest parts of the crown in between the peaks will be. So to give a rough idea of the general shape of the crown, I connected the highest parts of the peaks to the thinnest points. The narrowest part of my crown is going to be an inch thick, although I do recommend going wider, especially if you don't have much sewing experience. I've drawn a line an inch above my bottom line to use as a reference point. I will hopefully have some diagrams on the screen to help me explain all this math because I know it's a lot of information at once. So far, the rough draft of our pattern should look like this. Now that we've drawn up the general shape of the crown, we can draw in the curves. I'm using a design ruler. You can use a French curve, a flexi curve, or any roundish object that you happen to have on hand if you don't have any of those drafting tools. You could also just eyeball it, but I highly recommend having something to give you a general round curve that you can even out. Once I'm happy with my curves, I switched back to a darker colored marker and retraced the final shape. I've marked where the middle of the crown is to remind myself to cut the pattern out on a fold. So this is what my crown looks like so far. You should cut this out and trace it again on some more paper before moving on to the next step because you will need two versions of this pattern and I'll explain why later, but I forgot to do that. Instead, I moved straight into adding seam allowance. I used half an inch of seam allowance. You can add however much is comfortable for you. Eventually, most of the seam allowance will get cut off during the sewing process anyway, so it really doesn't matter how much you use. Now it's time to pick out some fabric. I want my crown to match the rough that I made in the last video, so I'm using the same black fabric that I made the neckband of my rough out of. Unfortunately, I am almost completely out of this material. I had enough to cut out my outer fabric, but for my lining, I had to do some piecing. As I mentioned earlier, I forgot to cut out a version of this pattern that doesn't have any seam allowance, so I had to trace it onto some scrap paper. The stiffer your interfacing, the better. I have this fusible, ultra firm stabilizer, according to the label. I highly recommend this product specifically, so I'll try to remember to put a link to it in the description. I just found this at my local Joann's. Your interfacing is what will give your crown the stability to hold itself up on your head without needing to wire it, so you want the firmest version you can find. We cut out two matching pieces of outer fabric with seam allowance, but we only need one piece of interfacing without seam allowance. Luckily, this stabilizer is fusible, so I attached it to the wrong side of my outer fabric with my iron. This is the piece that is facing out when the crown sits on your head, not the lining. However, if you have sew-in interfacing, you'll want to baste it to your lining so that the stitching won't be seen on the finished crown, or at least won't be seen as much. Next, I pinned the two fabric pieces right sides together to prep them for stitching. This is not actually the next step, however. My brain just didn't seem to actually be working that well because it gets dark at 4 p.m. this time of year, so I am always tired. The actual next step is to cut out a couple pieces of elastic for the back closure. 
They should be just long enough to hook over a button with a little extra space, plus some seam allowance. I unfortunately forgot to measure my pieces, but I'm going to guess that they were around 2 inches long. I've pinned these in place to show you how they should look when you stitch them down, but I actually prefer to do this step without pins because they just tend to get in the way. You can see here that the loops are facing inwards, and the ends of the elastic are facing outwards in the seam allowance. When stitching the elastic loops in place, you want to sew back and forth a few times, securing them inside the seam allowance of your fabric piece. Next, we can stitch the two fabric pieces together like we pinned them earlier. Sew along the long bottom edge and along the curves, but leave the short outer ends open. Stitch close to the edge of the stabilizer, but do not stitch over it. If you stitch over the interfacing or stabilizer, it will make turning your crown inside out an utter nightmare and it won't sit right. Instead, just stitch along the edge of it as close as you can. Before the crown can be turned right side out, the seam allowance needs to be thoroughly trimmed. If you skip this step, it will ruin your whole project, so don't underestimate how important it is. Clip notches out of the curves. It should wind up looking like lots of sharp little saw teeth. Also trim the points of the curves so there's as little fabric there as possible. Be very careful not to accidentally snip the seam though. Then trim the seam allowance along the bottom edge of the crown. I left behind about a quarter of an inch. Trimming away all this extra fabric will not only make your project lay flatter, but it will be significantly easier to turn. I used a bodkin to turn my piece right side out. Once the crown is turned, it will mostly be a tube shape. You'll want to use a corner press or something similar to poke out the points at the tops of our crown peaks. If you don't have a corner press, you can just use a chopstick. Just don't use anything too sharp or it'll just rip through the fabric. You want something pointy but dull to really pop out those crisp points. Once your piece is fully turned, the next step is to press it with an iron. Be very thorough, making sure your edges are nice and flat and crisp. Crisp is the key word for the turning and pressing steps. You'll also want to tuck the seam allowance on those short outer edges into the two layers of fabric. Press this down very firmly so it stays in place. You can top stitch your crown, but I personally think it looks better without it. The ends do still need to be finished though, so I did that by hand. I used a ladder stitch just like I described in my last video. There should be a little diagram on the screen that describes how this works. You just make a small stitch on one side of your seam and then make another small stitch on the other side of the seam until you close up the opening. Now we have our two finished ends, one of which has those elastic loops on it. Next, we'll need to add some buttons for those loops to hook onto. I'm using these super round ball-shaped buttons because they're really great for this purpose. These are stitched down by hand on the edge that doesn't have the loops. So now the elastic can just wrap around the buttons, and that is what keeps the crown secured to your head. And with that, the crown is finished. This is a really simple accessory that can be made in an afternoon, but can be an incredibly cute addition to an outfit. You can make higher peaks or make your peaks closer together for a more dramatic crown. You can use a metallic fabric or even metallic paint to give it more of a metal look. You can add jewels or embroidery or any number of embellishments to make it more ornate. Or you can just keep it simple like I have so that it stays subtle and versatile. But don't be afraid to really experiment with different fabrics and finishing touches. The crown looks great when paired with a ruff, but it can also look nice on its own. That's all for today. This will be my last video of 2022, but I'll be back in January. I hope everyone is having a nice holiday season and a safe new year, and with that, I'll see you all next time. Bye!